screen. All right. Yep. Okay. So, um, so I'll kick off 10 minutes uh, and just say hello to everybody looking in wherever you are in the world. And, uh, and thank you to um, Rosalita and Transport Events and obviously Cameron and Ram as the, as the main sponsors for, for this and then for inviting us to, um, to provide some information for you. So, so focus is container terminal automation, obviously real world solutions. So I'll take you through some real world uh, solutions that we're, we have in practice today. And I have three case study slides for you. So you can um, look at some of the benefits uh, as uh, documented by the customer. So for us, um, we've taken a, what I call a slightly different uh, approach to terminal automation. Um, and you'll see on the next slide, the, the partnership, but the whole focus and the approach was around becoming uh, equipment uh, independent, um, mode independent and toss independent. So when we engage with a customer, uh, we are independent of those decision-making um, processes. So another key approach was to retrofit existing assets and toss. So not discarding old assets and not discarding uh, the toss, whatever people are, are using. And of course you can also um, apply it to new equipment and new toss. We also looked at uh, phasing. So we, we moved away from the big bang approach. We, uh, we have a phased uh, approach to how you can implement and apply the different technologies that I'll uh, go through. And that will just serve to help and, uh, and appeal to different risk appetites uh, around safety operations and cost versus return um, profiles. So there were the, that, that was the different approach. So obviously, um, I think one company and one person uh, would not be able to uh, claim to be everything to everybody. So we've married up a, a group of people um, that we've brought together under a, a formal partnership arrangement, which we call end-to-end. Uh, -end, and that is uh, Jacobs, who's the largest civil engineering design company in the world. Um, and in 2019, were the number one ports maritime and uh, airports. We have iSpec, which is um, something we know and use a lot. And so we have purchased $3 billion worth of uh, port assets in every continent around the world. That's our project management tool. Um, Trent is a, is a global port solutions and everybody within Trent is, a, is an ex um, port operator person, be that P&O, CSX Sealand, Hutchison Ports, um, DP World. So we're, we have come, excuse me, we've come from the port environment. Um, Igo Solutions are our operations um, team. So they have a, a suite, of, which I will show you on the AI technologies focused purely in the operation. And then lastly, AI drivers, um, which is a pioneer really in, in uh, autonomous mobility. I have a slide on that and with a case study. And so you can get a bit of a feel um, for, for what autonomous mobility um, means. So for us, um, not to sort of sound too corny, but um, partnering uh, is obviously key uh, and really working with uh, our customers and stakeholders and understanding the the real um, strategic goals and objectives because uh, everybody varies slightly, everybody has a, a different risk appetite. So working with people, we are able to look at every asset on the, on the automation side, on the autonomous side, on the green side, the safety side, and we can put a picture together that makes sense for them. And that's what we, um, we, we work on in, in terms of our deliverables. And uh, of course we do that through iSpec, and through our E2E partners, we, we operate what, uh, it, and depend on the size and complexity, ORAT, which is a, originally from aviation, um, which we then have transformed into a turnkey deliverable um, process for, for our more complex um, projects. So that's taken into account all of the uh, civils, the equipment, the operations, et cetera. So you've all seen uh, a bit of this. So um, remote control, it, I think uh, Ian touched on it. It's fairly commonplace, I think, today. Um, so somebody said start the video. Okay. 
So I think this is a more commonplace, um, and the reason why I've put it on there really, um, it's predominantly key cranes, uh, but the slide that I'll take you through on autonomous uh, terminal tractors, um, it would be the same environment, similar process, some of the same. So whether you have a remote control crane, whether it's on a new port or whether you retrofit it, um, pushing in other equipment like terminal tractors and RTGs is not, a, is not such a difficult process. Um, of course, we talk about um, protecting the business. Uh, we have a customer who has been impacted by the pandemic, um, having key people stranded in different countries um, that, that has been quite disruptive. So, you know, you could look at automation, you could look at remote control and look at the level of disruption that you, you may be able to um, uh, mitigate against. And of course, you bring in different um, working opportunities through, uh, through remote control and automation um, in terms of what was previously blue collar work uh, would now be open um, to other types of uh, white collar people. Um, empowering females, you see females in this paper, it, in this um, slide. So that's a real life operation uh, in terms of uh, having females in there. So on the um, operation side, let me, so here's our operation side, um, just focusing on the, the, the left to start with. So these are all AI uh, driven developed modules um, around the vessel, uh, around the, the, the berth, the yard, the equipment site. I have a slide on that uh, a bit later. The gate and, and systems. So the, over, the overarching sort of strategic view comes from uh, what is called uh, the port site. Um, and that is your bird's eye view of the past, present and future. These are, these are your forecasting tools. So um, your recommendation and forecasting, uh, where you see inconsistencies, your predictions for bottlenecks and, uh, and the assistance that you, that you need. So, so on the right hand side, currently this is fully integrated to, to Navis. Um, it can be fully integrated to anything. So this is where our TOS independence comes from. Um, the solutions are not big bang, so any one of these are able to be implemented and work with port sites. So again, this is all about scaling up, um, getting people familiar with AI, uh, taking your current TOS, if it's not um, an AI or an intelligent uh, TOS per se, uh, then you can start to make parts of it uh, more AI and intelligent focused. So here's a case study. Uh, this is from a customer. So these, uh, whilst we, we share these results, they are, they are there. So uh, this is a, a, a one plus million TEU terminal um, with 15 ship to shores and 45 RTGs. You see on the left and the right a, a before and after. So, so just some, some basic, you would see the difference between moves and yard utilization um, and energy, which they were tracking. And I think through just obviously better um, managing of, uh, of assets in general, they, they saw uh, an energy reduction. So, um, and, the, and the big bubbles that you see at the bottom are, the, are just the percentages of, of those. So the picture on the bottom right, uh, when, when I say is just the beginning, because this is all AI, it's all machine um, learning, um, and as such, it, it's what it says on the tin. It, it learns and it gets better. So, so this is uh, the, this terminal has just started and just continues to um, to improve its numbers. So, just a, a little the slide before we talked about equipment um, uh, equipment site. So this is a failure uh, prediction. Everything I'm showing you today is AI developed and driven. So. This client was a fully automated terminal, uh, obviously relevant to this discussion, 60 AGVs. Um, they gave us a goal to uh, predict a failure within two to eight hours and obviously um, minimize operational impact. So creating a prototype, predictive failures, uh, targeting a 62% precision rate. So, uh, I mean, obviously th this is uh, applicable to any asset. Um, here is the AGV real life example, but um, applying this to a, 
RTG, ASC, Keycrane um, is is the same is the same process. So so lots of things taken on board here. Um, whether it's a mechanical system in terms of a tire, whether it's the black box that's in the machine, there's other information that comes into this model um, via Excel, via maintenance uh, systems, via Navis. So, so there's a lot of information that's coming in to, um, to this model. Um, and so here is the case study here. So on the left, you see the before and after for, for, for these guys. Um, and obviously perimeter stops are, are hugely disruptive. So you can see a, a decent reduction there in terms of recorded perimeter stops, um, record lowering cost of breakdown uh, than on the AGV. So on the right hand side, the, the confidence level, that, that, that's us, that's the model predicting, uh, it's actually over 75% um, predicting the failure rate uh, a breakdown two to four hours before it happens so so right now today on that fleet uh, over 75 percent um, of the breakdowns are being accurately recorded two to four hours before they happen 10 high risk agvs were were identified and all of those anomalies were validated by the um the team on site on the bottom right uh, one thing that's been um clear that, that's coming is the KPI, so the system obviously being smart and, and intelligent and learning. You can see uh, the recommendation of different KPIs. So, so highlighted here on the basis that maybe the KPIs today will not be the ones that are most suited tomorrow, uh, not when you come into um, systems and technology uh, like, like this. So just on this final, uh, slide here around the failure prediction on the bottom left, you'll see the four circles. So for the failure prediction and for the uh, the operational AI stuff, there is zero capital expenditure, there is no custom engineering, there is no team expansion or workflow changes. Um, and once the modeling is applied uh, and set to use, you start to see your first results um, from our experience in about uh, four weeks. So that was a case study on um, predictive uh, failing. Uh, final two slides for, for me is around the autonomous um, mobility. So this is the, the problem that initially set. So this is through AI drivers. So I, on the, the other slide, you saw AI drivers there were the specialists uh, in here. So the problems obviously, uh, our guess is fairly normal around um, everybody would be improving safety. This is what we, uh, you know, AI drivers was given, reducing accidents, uh, reducing OPEX, uh, extending asset life through uh, a, a kinder handling of the machine, improve return on investment, um, reduce business interruption and operational risk. So, so here what you'll see is, is just a, a, a diagram of a, of a standard terminal tractor. So the key thing here is in the purple box is just a group of uh, hardware that is the the framework itself uh, lidar radar sensors um, that is a kit gets bolted onto your terminal tractor and turns it into an autonomous uh, unit um, so retrofitting an old um, doable uh, and done today. Retrofitting uh, in phases, also uh, doable and done today, and obviously on the new. And the difference on the new equipment, as we've seen with one customer, uh, is the new equipment coming out now on the tractors is like drive-by-wire. So it's it's just easier for the, uh, the, the trickery, if you like, to, to manage um, the, the drive-by-wire. But everything today, when I show you a case study, is all standard terminal tractors, hydraulic steering, et cetera, et cetera. Just on the right to point out through the technology that AI drivers uh, have and use, we don't use um, proximity um, sensors or GPS. So, uh, so I know that will sound a bit uh, crazy, but that's how it is. And, uh, and the detailed explanations can, uh, can happen later. But so currently the mapping of the yard and the operation of the autonomous vehicle in that workspace it is not through proximity sensors or GPS, which means that we can open that up to ports that may 
that may have a lesser budget uh, and may want a quicker deployment. So the last slide from me is just the uh, case study. Again, terminal operator. The on the right is not the <laughs> not the unit that was converted. The, a standard terminal tractor was, uh, or, or a few of them were converted. This is just a Sani truck that was converted into an autonomous truck in less than a week, um, as an example to, uh, to, to Sani. So here on the last slide is the data from the terminal operator after converting um, the testing was exhaustive, to say the least. Uh, it did span a 24-month period, uh, and it is a 24-operation um, terminal. So uh, many, many things, but key things, it, obviously, that they were looking to see an advantage with is fuel cost, maintenance cost, driver cost, and overall the OPEX. So, so you can see from here, um, from a manual to an autonomous truck, uh, of course, the, the fuel um, um, in the way that the vehicle is being used. Maintenance cost, which um, we were expecting. The driver cost is obvious because uh, you've moved into the remote control um, and you can see a healthy reduction on the, on the OPEX um, cost per year. So of course, country by country will be different, but this is the, a real life case study um, on an autonomous mobility. So I don't know how I've done for time, um, but that, is our slides and so yeah thank you